In 2018, a YouTube channel by the name of Piper Bynes was created. What initially might have seemed like an innocent child having fun would soon turn out to be something much darker. Let's investigate. If you enjoy internet mysteries, conspiracies and true crime, feel free to subscribe and turn on notifications for more content like this. I also have a Patreon and a PayPal, so if you're interested in supporting the channel, feel free to check those out, links will be in the description. I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Jessica, who reminded me of this mystery and was a great help with researching it. I think she might also do a video on this, so keep an eye out for that. I'll leave a link to her channel in the description. Quick warning, this video will contain vague discussions of inappropriate content featuring children. You can head over to my Patreon for an uncut version of this video, which is less censored and goes into a little bit more detail. I recently became aware of a YouTube channel that initially seemed weird but harmless. The channel goes by the name of Piper Bynes, and the description reads, Hi, my name is Piper Bynes, and I'm a close lookalike to my cousin, Amanda Bynes. She gave me a lot of props from her show and clothes, so now we are making the Piper show after my cousin's show. Also, we do a lot of visual effects. Some of the videos on the channel are clips from the Amanda show in which Amanda Bynes was the main character when she was a child. The more I watched though, the more worried I became. The recurring themes that aren't exactly appropriate for kids, such as clips and characters from R-rated movies, zombies that are sometimes edited to look like they're doing questionable things, and random animations that feature a very young looking girl dressed inappropriately. There are also videos with short clips from random movies in which appear to be deep faked. Even since I now have a pretty good idea of what's going on here, I'm still baffled as to why this channel is uploading these deep fake videos. Anyway, none of the comments on the videos acknowledge how strange this channel is, which makes me wonder if the ones that do will have probably been deleted. Most of the comments that remain tend to just say how fun and interesting the videos seem, but a lot of them seem to be from older men and the occasional woman. One of the regular commenters is the new creator, who uploads pretty regularly himself, usually just gaming content. The channel description presumably hasn't ever been updated, as it lists his age as 23, though his date of birth would make him 25 now. So what is a 25 year old man doing commenting on what appears to be a child's videos? Another frequent commenter is a much older looking Russian man whose name translates to Oleg. He regularly posts animation videos, many of which are characters dancing or covers of songs. Slightly odd, but nothing too incriminating. Again though, why has he been commenting on a child's videos since around the time she set up the account? Piper also had a Twitter account, which has since been suspended, where she made seemingly random posts thanking other Twitter users. She also posted some e-rape and somewhat suggestive CGI images. Piper also followed various locked accounts and users who appeared to be teenagers, but reportedly seemed more like adults posing as younger people. One red flag being that all the photos apparently looked like really old photos from at least 10 years ago. Many of the accounts that followed Piper and commented on her posts were old men who posted not safe for work content on their own profiles. I attempted to do some research into a Piper Bynes, pretty confident that this person didn't even exist, let alone was behind this YouTube channel. I couldn't find anything to corroborate Amanda having a cousin named Piper, let alone that she'd given Piper props and outfits to make her own show. At this point, I'm thinking this is probably just some random kid who is a fan of Amanda Bynes and wanted to make their own version of the Amanda show. But that show ended nearly 20 years ago now. Most kids today probably don't even know who Amanda is and have probably never even heard of her show. This led me to wonder if the account is even run by a child at all. Prior to me hearing about this channel, it had already been investigated by people on 4chan and Kiwi farms, and someone even went to the effort of writing up a 33-page case report on what they managed to find. What they did find is sickening, but it may only be the tip of the iceberg, and there's still so much mystery surrounding this situation. I'll be using that report, plus information I found via archived threads, as a guide to present everything we know so far about what has been dubbed Pipergate. Suspicious about Piper's true identity, 
Internet sleuths decided to reverse search the email address linked to the YouTube and Twitter accounts and found that it didn't belong to a teenage girl, but to a now 67-year-old man named William. Things took a darker but somewhat predictable turn when it was found that William had previously been convicted of possessing inappropriate images of children. Since his conviction, according to the case report, he owned an unlicensed modelling agency, Wizard Productions, which as I'm sure you could guess, focused on kids. That business no longer exists. Piper's email address is not public on the channel anymore, so I'm unable to personally verify that as a link between Piper and William, but the case report features screenshots to corroborate it, and many other people separately came to that conclusion on 4chan as well. Through this email address, another was found with the account name Piper Bynes, further connecting William to the YouTube channel. Other email addresses linked to William were used for various different YouTube channels, including one named Christina Black, which seems to have uploaded between May and September in 2014. There aren't many videos, which makes me wonder if some have been deleted, but it was clearly aimed at children, yet featured some very suggestive, inappropriate and sometimes violent clips. There are voiceovers for the animated characters, which to me sound like it could be an older man putting on a voice and possibly editing it to make it sound more like a young girl. The email address being linked with William is a pretty strong link between the Christina and Piper channels, but there are other similarities in the videos too. The animation style is similar, they both have videos about Space Girl with very similar looking characters. There was another channel, also under the name Christina Black, which has either been deleted or suspended. This one was even worse than the other, it showed animations which were more direct, and even clips of real life kids dancing. The channel linked to a Facebook page which, in addition to various images of kids that were probably originally innocent photos with a new creepy context, also showed random, less creepy clips of kids. There was also a Twitter linked on the YouTube account which mentions the Amanda Show, perhaps only as a reference to the account's name, but there are many loose links with Amanda Bynes in general throughout all of this. I don't know why that is, but it is something that keeps popping up. I wonder if William just had a bit of an obsession with her, it's the only explanation I can think of. Anyway, there's not much more to say on the Christina Black channels, seeing as most of the content has since been deleted, but you get the gist of it. The main point to take away from that is that whatever's going on here appears to have been going on since at least 2012, if not before. Back to Piper, there are a number of Twitter users who regularly interacted with her, or him, and many of these were names with random numbers after. The case report details many suspicious details about these people, including various interactions with minors. What's really worrying about some of the people connected with this is that you can literally find them on Facebook and other social media, and they just appear like totally normal people. Some of them are married and have kids, which makes me want to throw up, but there's no indication that they're into anything like this. I wonder if the families even know. Obviously we don't have any concrete evidence that this is a ring per se, and we don't know exactly what the intentions behind the YouTube channel are, but we can make an educated guess as to what's going on here. Some of these accounts are run by someone who has literally been convicted of relevant crimes. If the people associating with him know this, then they're obviously part of it. And if they don't, they're still interacting with what they believe to be an underage child, so they're still part of it, even if it's not some organised ring. Let's take a look at some of Piper's associates on Twitter, starting with Sky, which appears to be a young girl. I say young girl, but I'm not actually sure how old she's supposed to be. I'm bad at guessing ages, but she looks no older than 13 to me, yet she says she works in a daycare and passed her driving test last year. Anyway, according to the case report, Sky previously used a different account named Heather. Through this, she became friends with other questionable characters who we'll get onto later, then eventually Piper. When Heather's profile photo was found on Google Images, she admitted that it wasn't her, and that she'd never put her real face on the internet. That's when the Sky account was created, and soon after, the Heather account was suspended. If you scroll back through Sky's tweets, you can see quite a few that mention Piper, often referring to Piper as her best friend. She has promoted Piper's content in the past, describing it as fun and awesome, and also apparently defending it when someone pointed out how creepy it is. 
Other than that, and the occasional suggestive comment, there's nothing too incriminating on this Twitter page, at least not that's public now, but tweets could have been deleted. Though the simple fact that Sky is claiming to be best friends with what they either believe to be a child, or that they know to be an adult man posing as a child is bad enough. As with the Heather account, people grew suspicious of Sky and accused her of being a fake account, so she posted a photo of herself holding a sign to prove she was real. However, just like Piper, it would turn out that Sky wasn't a young girl at all, but an older man, and the circumstances behind this account are very weird. According to the case report, the Sky account is actually run by a man named William West, we'll call him Bill. Sky is actually Bill's daughter, which explains the photo with the sign to prove that the account's real. A man in his 60s posing as a young girl is creepy enough, but using his own daughter's photos and even getting her to pose for pictures with a sign to make it all seem more real is just next level messed up. He appears to have somewhat of a fixation on his daughter. All the social media accounts that are found under his name all had photos of a young Sky for the profile pictures and there were very few, if any, photos of him. I know some parents do set the profile pictures as photos of the kids, but it's taking it to a whole new level when all of the photos, more or less, are of his daughter and he's even posing as her. The case report mentions his children, suggesting that he has more kids other than just Sky, so why does he only post photos of her? I actually found a few accounts on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram that are under Sky or Bill's name. As for the Sky accounts, I really can't work out which, if any, really are Sky, or if they're all just Bill. Sky supposedly set up a GoFundMe in May of this year for Bill to raise money to fund a movie. It just basically explains how he had a hard life and he's titled My Dad's Big Break. There are a number of other accounts which associate with these that show possible signs of being sock accounts, such as no tagged photos and no comments on their posts, despite some of them having thousands of friends. Some of the accounts I came across under Bill or Sky's name seem to have been set up for the sole purpose of promoting a book that Bill wrote, Sky, Child Interrupted. Hardly a surprise that the book was about his daughter. Obviously I haven't read it, but you can get the gist of it from what Bill and Sky have said about it online. Here's part of the description on Amazon. Early in the decade of 2000, the Department of Human Services of Ellsworth, Maine, Child Protective Division, along with other municipalities, came under scrutiny for their questionable policies and immoderate tactics. Discover how a toothache led to a two-year nightmare for this quiet and law-abiding family. Well, kinda quiet and law-abiding. To clarify the toothache comment, Bill claimed that he had severe toothache and took pain medication without realising he wasn't supposed to drive after. He got into a crash, then CPS falsely accused him of having a prescription drug problem, then took Sky away. A different description, supposedly posted by Sky, implied a slightly different situation. She said her father was wrongfully criticised due to his marriage to a woman who used to have a drug problem, no mention of the toothache or car crash. It also says both parents were deemed equally unfit. Sky is a multi-emotion provoking love story about a mismatched couple and their struggle to save their marriage amidst their valiant battle for custody of their child against this powerful but once highly criticised state agency. An essential read for any parent who has picked up a drink or a drug. I don't want to falsely imply anything specific without even reading the book or knowing the facts. But I get a feeling that the real reason Sky was taken by CPS was worse and more complex than him driving after taking medication for toothache. Other descriptions posted by Bill or Sky state that Bill had stage 4 kidney disease, mild emphysema and Asperger's syndrome, though apparently neither he or his wife knew about the Asperger's at the time and his condition was somehow mistaken for him being on drugs, which doesn't really make sense. Before Sky was born, Bill had a daughter who died at just one day old. When Skye was taken into care, Bill eventually decided his only chance of getting her back was to divorce his wife and after years of fighting for custody, eventually got her back and raised her as a single parent. Considering what and who Bill appears to be connected with, I really don't like the thought of him alone having sole custody of his daughter. The book has 11 reviews on Amazon, most of which are 5 stars, 
though at least one of those is a family member, and I have a feeling some of the others might be fake. They have similar writing styles and language, and we know it wouldn't exactly be out of character for Bill to create fake reviews. According to the case report, he created multiple accounts in the names of his children to promote his book. I wonder if they're even aware of this, and if so, how they feel about it. It's certainly an unusual thing to do. Anyway, I'm sure there are many other shady things surrounding Bill, but I've digressed a bit here, so back to the Twittering. One user who communicates with the Sky Twitter account, as well as other miners, is named Jacob, and is also thought to have been created by Bill. Neil Fix is another user who comments on Sky's tweets, and this appears to be a real account, not another of Bill's sock accounts. Though I'm convinced that Neil buys followers, because he's got well over a thousand followers, and yet never gets more than a few likes on his tweets. He often tweets something like, good day to, then tags various different accounts, most of whom are women who look significantly younger than him, one even specifies in their bio that they're a teenager. The case report suggests that these kind of tweets are a way for the ring to signal to each other that they're still active. Mickey is another user who regularly comments on Sky's posts, and who used to interact with the Piper account before it was suspended. There are various instances of Mickey making creepy comments, or innuendos, on suggestive and inappropriate tweets by Piper, or other accounts which may have been actual minors. Then there's Paul, who seems to be connected with almost everyone who has been linked to this. He frequently makes inappropriate comments on clearly underage girls' posts. Some of these accounts may or may not be other older men posing as young girls, it's impossible to say, but Paul, Mickey, and other accounts are known to target the same girls at the same time. There are various other accounts from all over the world that have interacted with both the Piper and Sky Twitter accounts, but we'd be here all day if I went into them all. The last key player we're going to cover is Dalton, or the new creator on YouTube, who as I mentioned earlier, frequently comments on Piper's videos. Dalton plays an online game, Roblox, which has a user base of mainly children, so as I'm sure you guessed, he allegedly used it to groom children. According to the case report, he created a Satan-worshipping cult on Roblox titled Daltonism, though it only gained a total of 31 members at its peak. The case report also mentions, but doesn't elaborate on, an incident in 2019 where he said something stupid and got Piper and Sky banned from Facebook, so he's no longer able to communicate with them via Twitter. Now might be a good time to give a quick summary, as we've covered a lot and there's a lot of people involved here. So the Piper Bind YouTube channel is run by a man who was convicted in 2002 of possessing inappropriate images of minors. Through that channel, the suspended Twitter account and God knows how many other sock accounts, he communicates with various other accounts who also communicate between themselves and with underage girls or with older men posing as underage girls. The Sky Twitter account is run by a man named Bill West who is posing as his daughter on this account and various others. He wrote a book about his daughter getting taken into care and it's unclear whether she is aware that her dad is using her photos to talk to underage girls. There is evidence of William, Bill and the other accounts all communicating inappropriately with young girls and clearly enjoying suggestive content which focuses on young girls. It has been theorised that these people somehow use Twitter and YouTube to discuss and possibly even share CP, but that hasn't been proven. Ever since the original Christina Black channel, there have been a few consistent words and phrases which could be code for something else. For example, mentioning going to the park, specifically Central Park, which could be code for CP, but that's just a theory. Even with the knowledge of who is really behind the Piper channel and the context of the Twitter accounts, the YouTube channel itself is still a bit of a mystery. It could be a way of luring kids in, but it feels different to say it, which very clearly targeted kids. Piper's videos are childish, with some vaguely inappropriate moments, but if the sole purpose was to rope kids in, why centre it around the Amanda show 
as opposed to a show that's popular with kids now. This makes me wonder if it's more about role-playing for these people. I imagine it's not easy to find a real victim in a risk-free situation, so I imagine role-playing allows these people to act out their sick fantasies without actually breaking the law. With that, there is still a chance that they could rope children in, but it's possible that role-playing is the main purpose of the YouTube account and the other accounts, including Sky's Twitter. That's not to say that these people aren't distributing CP behind the scenes, there's no solid evidence of that, but it's not exactly a stretch. Even if the main purpose of the Piper channel is role-playing, there are still many unanswered questions. What's going on with the deepfakes? Is it William using a child's likeness, or is there an actual child involved here? Some of the clips in the videos are clearly scenes from movies with the face superimposed, I have no idea if the girl is just a random public figure who I don't recognise, or if she's a family member of Williams or a member of the ring's daughter. Same with the voice in some of the videos, it genuinely sounds like a young girl as opposed to an old man putting on a young girl's voice, like in some of the videos on the Christina Black channel. Again, some of the audio clips are clearly from movies, but others just sound way too unprofessional. I guess William could have found the audio on a random kids YouTube channel, at least I hope it's something like that rather than he has access to a child who is putting up to this. While we don't know for sure exactly what these people are doing, or what the purpose of the YouTube channel is, we've seen some very inappropriate behaviour from each of them, and I really think this needs to be investigated further. But people have already reported this, the case report itself was put together with the focus of sending it to law enforcement for them to investigate further. And yet this is still going on publicly. I don't know if they just didn't bother to look into it properly, or they did and they couldn't find any solid evidence. Most of the comments left by The Ring are certainly creepy, but not necessarily incriminating. I'm guessing police would have to find evidence of actual distribution of CP, or for one of the ring members to be attempting to meet a minor or something to be able to do anything about it. I have seen it theorised that this is all one big honey trap set up by law enforcement to catch people out, which would explain why some of the accounts are still active. But there have been other accounts associated with the ring that have been suspended, and the Piper channel appears to have been definitively linked to William, a known criminal. Unless William doesn't exist and was created by law enforcement as a decoy or something, which is a massive stretch. It seems unlikely that they had anything to do with this, so I can only assume that they just didn't have enough evidence to do anything about it. This mystery is far from solved, I wouldn't class it as anywhere close until the people involved are all facing the consequences of their actions. If you're interested in investigating further, feel free to join the Internet Mystery Sleuths Discord server and head over to my section, a link will be in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing, and leave your thoughts and theories in the comments. Huge thank you to my patrons, whose names are on screen now, I really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Thursday in a new video.